many buff and many prop are great programs that run on uh, personal computers and if you need more information about them I'll, I'll be glad to give it to you I did run some propagation tonight to various uh, areas of the world uh, because the a index is at 29 DX tonight is very poor 10 meters uh, has no signals if you've listened earlier to this evening 15 <coughs> 15 was uh, just about to shut down the time the net started here and 20 is in, in rather poor shape uh, this will affect all the radio frequencies at HF, and certainly it will affect the, the frequencies at VHF. Uh, the higher the solar flux, the lower the, the uh, A and the K, the better the, the propagation thrown up into VHF. Well, I've spoken quite a bit tonight about what's going on. I don't know if I've answered all of your questions. Certainly, I'll be glad to answer any other questions you might have. I think I've taken more than my 10 minutes. And uh, at this time, uh, why don't we stand by to see if anybody needs the repeater for emergency traffic. This is K0VXU with the Heart of America Radio Club Net. I hear no, no uh, need for the repeater at this time for emergency traffic. Uh, at this time, uh, I will entertain questions, but I would like to keep it short. The meeting uh, the, is going to go long here if we don't. But if you have questions, why don't you ask them now? And if you need further information, I'll be glad to answer them uh, off the repeater or maybe at some other time uh, when we can arrange it. This is K0VXU, uh, oh, throwing it open for questions. WA0TV with a question. Yes, Bob, go ahead, WA0TV. Well, QSB are fading in and out, uh, ultimately uh, resulting in a complete failure of communication. Is this caused by varying propagation or what? Well, yes, Bob. Uh, when you have fades like that, uh, it is certainly from uh, the loss of propagation to the ionosphere. The, uh, the one thing that, that was asked earlier and I didn't really talk about here, when you have propagation via the ionosphere, the ground wave generally is diminished. In other words, the distance that the ground wave can go is, uh, is less. When the uh, ionospheric propagation becomes poor, generally the ground wave becomes better. These are things that, that uh, I'm certainly mathematicians can prove to you, but I've learned it through experience. Any other questions from K0VXU? K0VXU, you're on the air. Yes, Buck, go ahead. Not entirely a ham radio related uh, question, but I remember growing up as a kid when I first got my uh, clock radio, I used to try to tune in, you know, WLS in Chicago and uh, KAAY in Little Rock and all those real high powered uh, AM stations. And I noticed there's a lot of, and, and of course it's very noticeable on the ham bands, there's a lot of, uh, I guess what you could call the jet plane effect as you hear uh, what's you know, the same signal may go from being kind of a hollow sound to a very bright uh, treble-infested sound, and it just kind of fluctuates. Are we hearing there a change in bandwidth, or are we hearing a change in signal strength, or what causes that, uh, you know, that change in the tonal quality of the signal? Well, I think, I think you're referring to something that I, I call uh, selective fading or multipath fading and it's uh, quite prevalent on the AM frequencies. And back in the days when ham radio operators were using a AM double sideband with, with carrier, uh, it was quite noticeable. <clears throat> and uh, uh, selective fading occurs when you have two radio waves arriving at the same point at the same frequency from the same transmitter, obviously, but they're out of phase. And uh, that's because they each travel a, a little bit different distance. One will travel a little further than the other. And uh, the result is that the two waves received uh, at the receiver are slightly out of phase, and they cause the signal to become distorted. Matter of fact, uh, it gets to the point sometimes where if you've ever listened to single sideband with just a straight old diode detector uh, without a BFO or without any... Uh, injected the oscillator, then uh, it sounds very much like that. Uh, that, uh, that I think, is what you're referring to. Another, another thing you must be aware of in propagation, if you're interested in DXing, and, and you alluded to it by listening to WLS and KAOA or KAY or KOMA or uh, KOA or KOB, whatever, uh, WMAQ, I can think of all of them. I used to broadcast band DXs, if you can't tell. 
The signals uh, right now at this time of the night will be strongest from the east. But as the night wears on and we get toward dawn, the signals are stronger from the west. Now, that's true uh, propagation on the broadcast band. It generally means also that HF propagation is better as you point your antenna toward the sun. Uh, for frequencies certainly uh, 14 megahertz and above or even 10 megahertz and above, if you point your antenna toward the, the general direction of the sunrise uh, to the east, that's where the propagation will occur. And as the sun moves across from east to west, uh, then you will point your antenna toward the south and then eventually to the west. That's just generally the way propagation works. And uh, that can be explained by uh, mathematics and by uh, good models. I don't know if we want to get into that here. This is K0VXU. Anyone else? I have one more question, Rob. Sure, go ahead, Bob. Can uh, several forms of propagation occur at the same time with the same signal? I believe so, Bob. I think I understand your question, but uh, yes, uh, you can have uh, propagation uh, occurring, for example, uh, through the F layer and the E layer and the D layer. You may be spraying a signal in, in several different places at the same time. It's very, very possible to do that. Thank you, WA0TV. Any other questions? Uh, I, I'd be glad to answer what I can. If you want a bibliography, I do have a bibliography here. If you're really interested in reading, uh, I have some, some good information there. I also have some telephone numbers of BBSs that uh, carry these types of information if you're interested in that. And um, also, I'll be glad to point you in the right direction to get a copy of uh, many props. This is K0VXU. Any other questions? And 0 oag right, Good evening, Tim. In 0 oag K0VXU. Go ahead. Yeah, good evening, Russ. Uh, can you give an extremely brief, uh, maybe, synopsis of uh, ducting uh, based on atmospheric conditions rather than uh, the uh, layers? I can, I, can, I can take a shot at that. It, it's a little off the topic here, but uh, generally we are talking propagation. So uh, ducting is a phenomena that occurs when you have uh, generally temperature inversions in the atmosphere. In other words, uh, hot air normally rises, uh, but sometimes the warm air can be trapped underneath a layer of cold air. And where that boundary occurs between the two, it forms a, a, a reflecting surface, if you will, for the radio waves. It's not really reflecting, it refracts, just like it does to the ionosphere. And it will bend the, the radio wave back toward the Earth. This, uh, this is quite common on VHF frequencies and uh, UHF frequencies. And uh, quite honestly, for people in the microwave region, it's very, uh, very critical to their operation also. You get into a ducting effect like that, it sometimes can be detrimental to your microwave transmissions, even though you have high gain antennas and so on. Thank you, Russ. And zero OEG. Very good, Tim. This is K0VXU with the uh, Heart of America Radio Club Net. W0RR is net control in the form of K0ZMI. I'll uh, stand by one more time for any quick questions on propagation. This is K0VXU. I hear none. Buck, back to you. K0ZMI or W0RR. K0VXU. A uh, beautiful presentation, Russ, in ZRK. Hey, Bob. I agree, Russ. Uh, it was excellent and very well thought out, very well planned, and uh, fascinating, I think, in a word, because so many times we hear all the stuff and it just kind of runs together. I mean, I, for never uh, having known anything about it, feel like I'm at least a little bit better informed. So. Uh, Thank you very much. I, I just uh, have a quick question, Russ, and that is, how do they predict this stuff? I mean, you hear about the, uh, you know, the, the forecast for solar flux and some of the other uh, indicators, and how, how do they know? I mean, is it like Brian Busby on, you know, figuring out where the fronts are coming from, or what? Stick your finger up in the air after wetting it. Yeah, very good. Yes, Buck, uh, 
Indeed, um, I think Carrie WB0OIZ would be an excellent person to have on following me to, to tell you about that. The people that study the sun's surface and uh, the sun itself uh, know that there are certain cycles, and I didn't get into that, but maybe we ought to just speak a little bit about it here. The sun rotates on its axis once uh, every 27 days, and you can expect certain things to occur every time the sun makes one revolution. And, uh, and at least during the period, the 27-day period, certain things occur. There are certain regions of the sun that are more active than others, and when they're facing the Earth, they tend to, to release more energy, and therefore you can have higher levels of uh, solar flux. In fact, if you look at the ARRL forecast uh, that was published, I believe, on the, the, I had it here, I thought it was for the 10th of March. You know, if you'll just give me a moment here, I'll try and grab it out uh, if I can find what I did with it now. Nonetheless, that that forecast uh, was forecasting a a rather high amount of uh, of uh, solar activity on uh, on the 10th of March. And uh, let me, if you, just a moment, let me let the repeater drop while I get this stuff together. Okay, this is K0VXU with the uh, Heart of America Radio Club Net. The KT7H. Tad Cook is the fellow that takes care of propagation for the uh, ARRL and QST, and uh, he broadcast the bulletin on March the 5th, and uh, essentially it just said that solar activity was to inc had increased the week before, and that flux values rose about 40 points, and there were some disturbances from solar flares. Uh, he said most disturbed were the periods around 1,200 UTC on February 28th, with a K index of 5, and that's similar to what we have tonight, and 0,300 UTC on March the 4th, when the K index reached 6. Uh, it says that last disturbance was caused by a major flare out of a new region, and he calls it 7440 on the solar surface, and that the flare spewed forth late uh, or late in the day on March the, 20, or March the 2nd, causing a big upset a little over 24 hours later. Again, that's just the right on course, the proton event that we're talking about there. Well, at any rate, uh, he was forecasting flux levels to go around 165, and actually I think they went up closer to 180. But uh, because of this, it was easy to forecast. By the way, we did have a major flare at uh, 2200 uh, on 11 March, 2200 11 March, which was just a few hours ago. We had a major flare, so you can expect radio conditions on HF bands to be pretty punk here for the next couple of days. It takes about two or three days for it to wear off. But when it wears off, be ready to go get your DX. Uh, K0ZMI, K0VXU. Okay, Russ, thank you. That answers my question. I appreciate it. This is K0ZMI, net control for the W0RR, Heart of America Radio Club net. Uh, let's take one last standby. We're running a little late on time here. Uh, but if anybody didn't make the first round of check-ins, now's your chance to get in before we give you the final number.